Hey guys, Danny DNTR Taurus here once again. Uh, this time I am in the middle of an interview here with my good friend Courtney Bang Rice. He is a comedian, actor. Um, you came to uh, California how long ago? The first time I came out here, I was like five or four or something. Like that. Five or four? Jesus. Then, then I, we would move back and forth. I moved back out here permanently when I was 21. And, and that's when you wanted to get into the business? Well, me getting into the business actually um, started when I was, uh, I believe, five years old, watching uh, Michael Jackson perform. So that was that was the first time. That I was had, your inspiration. Yeah, that was the inclination. So I saw him, and I said, "Wow, I want to do that." Was it was it the fact that he he had that chemistry with the audience, or or the fact that people were were looking up to him? What was it about the fame? Was it the fame part? I think the idea of the performance is what captivated ah, me. I like the, I like the true idea. artist. Yeah, I like the idea of him like just uh, he was literally expressing himself through his dancing and his singing and everything. And I was like, you know, that makes sense. It's something inherent that's inside of you. This that, is true. You this know is me? true. I was watching an interview with Paul Mooney recently, and he said that that the true real comics and actors they're like born with it. Right. They have it in them already. Right. It's in them. Right. And it's yeah. kind of just destined to be. So, you've been in a couple of films. Uh, one of them being like the the indie cl or the cult classic part part three of Human Centipede. Yes. Um, you did not have any involvement in butts and mouths. None no, of that no, stuff. No butts. You were a security. I was. Uh, I was a uh, prison guard. Your first acting gig. My first acting gig was a movie called Exposed. I played a character named uh, Kevin Casanova Robbins. Kevin Casanova. Right. Uh, scary film, another um, indie scary movie. I've been in over five scary movies, and I've never died. What? Uh, it's not true, folks. Don't tell Hollywood, though, because they'll probably die. <laughs> like, we gotta get him. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he so, must die. Yeah, yeah but no. Uh, I heard you talking the other night about how... As far as acting goes, you don't want to get into too many background acting gigs because you'll get typecast as that kind of actor. Right. So you think, like people that want to reach for the top, the Leos, the De Niro's, the Nicholas Cage's. Mm. Nicholas out there. Yeah, he's out there, right? Well, he's he's <laughs> like he's like you know he's like Hollywood royalty, right? He, he is, right? Even yeah. with the run-in with the police. No, no, no. I mean, like his his family is he's like a Coppola or something like that. Like he's. What? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah, he just changed his name to Cage, so that people wouldn't go. You oh, that's sneaky yeah, bastard. Yeah. So no matter what, he would have been okay. What is it like stepping on on? I was gonna say stage, stepping you know on set on set. Yeah, yeah. For the first time, uh, is, it, is it the same as walking on stage for the first time? When you step on set, there's like a magic to it because you're just like you walk in and you're looking at everything and like it's like going to your to like a, a be, imagine being a little kid and you're reporting to like kindergarten for the first time and you see the ball, <laughs> yeah, the, the tricycles and everything. And you're like it. wow, look at all this cool stuff. It's like a playground. Exactly. It's like a playground. Um, I'll look at the actor and then you know and I'm like okay, I got to deliver um, a performance that's going to be worthy of that actor's energy mm. sort of you know what I mean so yeah it it's kind out. of a teamwork kind of thing um yeah kind of they depend on your acting to elevate themselves it's like sports right when you have a, like a superstar player exactly. and I think Kurt superstar player in a team it makes everybody else exactly. better because exactly. they all work as that, hard that superstar will, will take you to the next level because you dig a little deeper you know you'll you know you might study your lines a little more or you might you know do whatever because you want to match the same energy that that person's bringing to the you know, to the movie. You gotta put in the hard work. Yeah, yeah. To get. Uh, that's the hardest part of acting, especially for someone like myself. I have attention deficit disorder, so sitting down and reading uh, lines and memorizing it's them. Script. It's crazy. I don't okay. act because of you know, like I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get. I, I need the adoration of the <laughs> people. I don't. I don't Feed need my that. ego. No, no, no <laughs> ego here. Mine is more of a. Um, it's more of a, uh, a pat on the back, or like the 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 um, the acceptance um, of my peers. Uh -huh. Hard work pays off, kind of right. deal. Right. So um, your peers saying, "Hey, you're a good comic," or "Hey, you're you know you're a great actor." Yeah. That I'm good with that. 
Would you say it's better to to reach out to a comic than to like the comedy club to get on stage to be oh yeah perform definitely, somewhere? definitely develop relationships. That's that's what it's all networking. About. Networking is what it's about. Go to comedy shows. Go to like the the regular comedy shows. Don't go to like you know like a, special events. Yeah, don't go to like you know Louis C.K.'s concert and then try to track him down and try to talk. Well, to him. Louis. <laughs> yeah, just just go to you know when they have like um, you know like sometimes they'll have like open mics or they'll have something where it's like a bunch of comics performing. You know, it's gonna be a looser atmosphere. And you're gonna get you know it'll be easier for you to get in there and have a regular conversation. And if they see that you're serious about it, a lot of times some people will take you under their wings. They like your personality. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like me, I, I I did it totally backwards. That's what I'm saying. Like I used to literally go to people's clubs and be like, "Yo, let me do five minutes," <laughs> and it'd be like their show. You know, it worked for me at the time, and I, I kind of got my name out there and got to play a bunch of different places and meet a bunch of different people. And you know, right now I have a pretty good network of people that I know. People really want to see you hustle. Yeah. In order for them to. Give you a hand like he's working hard i want to right so when they see him. that then they come around. it's like it's like they're a part of your success in a way You're right so is there a fear in uh nowadays in the in the comedian community of stealing jokes being accused of stealing jokes i think uh, it's always uh in the back of people's minds because of the fact of just having uh it's just uh, a similar thought pattern you know that's what, what i was gonna say yeah which happens a lot the, the vehicle of comedy can, you know, I'm, I'm multifaceted. I sing, I rap, I, you, you know, do. Yeah, I do all these dance, different things, you dance, cook, all, you know what I mean? bake. Yeah, no, I cook. <laughs> I bake once. But you bake them all. Yeah, I can. No, they're all with it. No, no, I just, I, I, it's an exact science. That's true. And I don't, I'm not an exact guy. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a jazz musician. Hey, I, just, I love that. Yeah. I just, You're kind of just kind yeah. of all over the place, yeah. but, in, he but together in some way. Right. We were talking about writing. Is it like let's talk about rap? Like there's it's frowned upon when you have like ghost writers. And, you know, you're, you get more props when you write all your own stuff. Right. How is it with comedy? Like with comics, you say oh some comics have writers. Mm -hmm. Now when I hear that as someone who's like just barely scratching the comic world, yeah. I think oh why is he why can't he write his own stuff? You know, right, what I mean? right. that's my mentality. So right. how how is it within the comic? Within the comedy world, of course, it's 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 similar. But you get to a point where you've said everything. So then <laughs> you need fresh perspectives. <laughs> so if you ever wonder why, you know, like a, a comedian might have a crew around yeah. him, because those are fresh perspectives mm -hmm. on different stuff. So now he can hang around them. He can literally pick their brain, everybody's brain, the on the same subject matter. Yeah. He thinks it's funny. He might go, oh, that's crazy when this happened. And then that guy goes, oh, yeah, that was crazy. That's blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I got all kinds of material. Hey, so, uh, that feeling of bombing, what do you compare it to? Um, have you ever really loved, like, a chick and then she broke up with you for no reason? Ooh, painful. You're literally, you know, you break up with a chick and then you go, well, what did I do? Yeah. I, I loved her. I, I, I bought her everything. I gave her everything. Anything she wanted. I came home after work. I did. And you on stage, same way. I told all the jokes, yeah. I, mean, I, I wrote all this new material, I did everything, I, you know, what, what could I have done different? This is the thing, comedy is subjective, funny is funny, comedy is subjective, meaning that depending on the audience, they might not get it. It's true. And that's okay, you just have to accept that, that's why you write material. Material is, it's uh, derived from years of you working. What do you what do you want to accomplish as far as you say you've been acting for ten years you said yeah um, doing comedy for five uh, five and a half five and a half yeah. what is what is your goal now and what's the top what's you know what's your vision of the top I guess the top for me would be when you could give back from what you've gotten you know what I mean well that's one of my goals is to make enough money to like buy my mom's house there you go and that's help out the people that helped you out. exactly. All right, well guys, thank you for joining us. We had a great conversation with Courtney Bang Rice. Uh, look him up, C, uh, C Bang Rice. C Bang Rice on, on Instagram. Instagram. And then it's Courtney Bang Rice on uh, 
Facebook. Facebook. I'll, I'll add a link for his YouTube so you can check out some of his uh, some of his comedy. Very hilarious. You know what? Uh, see, Bang Rice might be Twitter actually. Bang Rice is. Uh, ah, yeah. see, I was. I used to go <laughs> Bang. I, that is true. I have you on Instagram. Bang yeah. Rice. Bang on Rice. Instagram. On see Bang Rice on Twitter. Rice on Twitter. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give you the link for YouTube. So thanks for joining us. Have a good night, and we might have Courtney back some other time if you'd like it. All right. Thanks, Peace. guys.